Welcome, welcome. I've been with my son all day and he is getting cranky and he's with grandma for just an hour while I do, I'm gonna jump on a team call here in a little few minutes. Um, but I wanted to come on here because I said I would and I posted the poll yesterday, um, basically with some options for possible live video ideas. So the one that I saw people picked was how to stay motivated and not give up, which I think is a good topic, right? Like it's already whatever, mid February, not quite. And most people have already given up on their new year's resolutions. So doesn't this seem like a good topic to talk about how to not give up on your goals? Okay, so here are my best tips to stay focused. And I've been pretty consistent since I started my health journey. Um, in hi, Krista. Hi, Krista. I've been um, pretty consistent since I started my health journey in 2010, 2010. Um, and I'll just tell you where I was at because my number one tip, if you want to write it down, is to know your why. And I think that's so super important. Like when you're like struggling, like should I keep going? Do I want to give up? Like, why am I doing this? When I started in 2010, I had graduated vet school in 2008, 28, yeah, 2008. And um, I was literally so beside, there were so many things, reasons why I needed this. For example, I was, I had gained 30 weight, 30 pounds since vet school. In vet school, I was able to stay pretty active like I was, I didn't have a car, so I walked to school. I didn't take the bus that much. I just walked to school or I walked to the grocery store or I went on walks while I was studying. Um, I went to the group fitness classes. I ran after, after like in the afternoons around campus. And so after veterinary school and I was working a, a very, very busy corporate veterinary practice, I did not have that much time to go to the gym. I had a gym membership, but I barely got, I barely ever got there. I didn't even have time to, for my church to have a relationship with God, which is really sad, but I didn't really go to church and I was struggling. I didn't have really much, that even that much social life. I'm going to close this for a second. Okay. I didn't have that much social life. I was just working and sleeping and working and sleeping and I was working from like 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. but then I was staying until 10 p.m. to finish medical, medical records and then I was eating dinner. By the time I got home it was like 11 p.m. I was eating dinner at 11 p.m. and then getting up at 6 in, in the morning and literally I was get, I was so exhausted. I oh so awful like I literally if I did ever try to watch a movie I would fall asleep because I was like my body's like oh you're stopping it must be time for bed <laughs> I was like chronically tired chronically exhausted um, I had chronic back and neck pain all the time I was always tense and stressed all the time and then furthermore I struggled with insecurity and worrying what other people thought about me and people pleasing. And I've been through four 12 steps in codependency and people pleasing as well. Um, because I still sort of struggle with it, but I really know boundaries now and I know how to take care of myself first. And so my why to not give up is I don't want to go back to that place. I am deathly afraid of going back to that place where I was exhausted and people pleasing and doing everything for everyone else and not taking care of myself, gaining weight, neck and back pain and um, exhausted. And that's not a place where I want to ever go again personally. So that's my number one tip is to know your why. Then my second tip, I think also very closely related is to know your priorities and goals that you're working on, but you can't really set your goals until you know your priorities, which is something I learned from Shalene Johnson. Because if you try to set a bunch of random goals and you're like all over the place and you don't like put together what's your priorities, you could be working on a goal that takes you away from your priorities and not even know it. So for me, 
my priorities that I've set, finally I figured out, is that intrinsically God, having a relationship with God is super important to me. So like I want to be able to have community inside my church. I want to be able to have community with Jesus. I want to be able to like spend time with him and spend time with my devotional and like really understand and just like I want that to be in my life. So to me, for me, that's a priority for me. And then, um, but if I don't prioritize it, then I could be skipping church. I could be not really reading my Bible. I could just be living for myself and not, and just being all selfish. And that's really easy for me to do because I'm selfish. I think we all are, unless we like give it to God and trust him with the plan. Hmm, thanks. So, so that's my number one priority. My second priority I realize has to be on my priorities is my health because it's like I wasn't putting my health as a priority I was just putting like my family as a priority my son my husband all these people but how in the world can I take care of them and like how can I have a good relationship if I'm not taking care of myself first how can I even expect my son to take care of himself if he doesn't see mommy taking care of herself first right like I think it's super important in fact I even noticed like when he was first starting to wean onto solid food I was like I better clean up my nutrition ASAP because I don't if, if I don't want him eating refined sugar if I don't want him eating sweets if I don't want him eating chips and fast food how am I gonna tell him no if mommy's eating those things right i can't tell him no if mommy's eating them he'll be like well mommy you get to eat that why, why can't i right so that's when i i actually gave up refined sugar about the time he was becoming he was around six months old and that's how i did that um and so so i have faith my health and then my family because they are important my husband although estranged still important because we still I still pray for him and I still have hope that he will get in recovery and my son obviously and my stepdaughters those are the most important family members number that I have to put first and then subsequent and then secondary family members of course grandma and grandpas and um, I think that's my main priorities um, and then once I know that that's my priority, then it helps me to set my goals where like in alignment with taking care of my health, in alignment with having my faith be important, in alignment with having my family be first, and I don't like choose all the shifts at work and I now I haven't seen my son for two weeks, you know, and or he's been at a sitter for five days a week and I don't want like I don't do that like he's only in preschool two days a week and then I homeschool him the other rest of the week because first of all I don't want to necessarily leave his educational process to the public school system I don't I just don't like I'm so into it like I really want to customize his educational experience um, I'm just excited I want it like I get to do this one time like with my son, I'm really excited to get to customize his education and get to like let it to let, let him learn the way he gets to learn and not the way some arbitrary 